Solo activity has its origins in magnetic fields that become twisted due to the differential rotation of the sun. Here we're going to do a short magnetic analysis of a solar flare. Um, so depicted here are active regions above sunspots. So the sun in this image is very, very active and we can see a solar flare on the left limb in that image, um, which was taken through some ion filter, in other words, light coming from the sun from a highly ionized state of um, one of the atoms inside of the sun, whether it's carbon, I'm not sure uh, which band it was taken in. But what we're going to do is examine the um, pressure, magnetic pressure, which is actually the energy density in the magnetic field of a solar flare. So magnetic pressure is actually the same as the energy density held inside of the magnetic field. By using the Zeeman effect, we can measure the magnetic field in, in the region of these flares. So we can actually measure um, B, and the energy density is B squared over two mu naught. Um, so here we are assuming that the magnetic field is 0.03 Tesla and that the flare erupted with uh, a release of energy in the amount of 10 to the 25th joules over one hour. Okay, so short flares typically are short-lived, <clears throat> relatively speaking. So we can find the energy density inside of the magnetic field, um, and this is 0.03 Tesla squared, and we'll have to divide by twice mu naught, which is the permeability of free space for pi times 10 to the minus seven, and the units will be joules per cubic meter. So that turns out to be 360 joules per cubic meter, which is a reasonable amount. Um, now we can actually figure out the volume associated with the energy release in the flare. So we had energy is 10 to the 25th joules, and that is 360 joules per cubic meter times the volume. So solving for the volume, <clears throat> we find that it is um, volume of flare, It's quite huge, 2.8 times 10 to the 22 cubic meters. And that's a little bit hard to grasp. So, so we are going to approximate the volume as a cube um, with a side of A. Now we know that solar flares are not cubic but we are just doing a quick back of the envelope type of calculation. Okay, so A cubed is equal to volume. And we can solve for the side of the cube and think about what, what it means. So the, the cube is roughly, um, we'll call it three, <clears throat> times 10 to the seventh meters, or three times 10 to the fourth kilometers. 
Okay, so we're sort of estimating that this flare, if we think about its length as a length A, I'm not drawing that very good, it's sort of a weird looking flare. Uh, yeah, um, and we can see from the image that that flare has a length. Oh, it's related to the size of the radius of the sun. It's some fraction of the radius of the sun, maybe a third of the radius of the sun. Okay, so in the image, and it, it, if we think about a typical solar flare, there probably is no such thing. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, anywhere from a few times the radius of the Earth out to several times the radius of the sun. So we'll write that down, that a solar flare has quite a bit of variable variability in length, Any, anything from about 10 times the radius of the Earth out to several um, times the radius of the sun. I think 30 times the radius of the sun is the maximum region of length. So we'll we'll just take a look at the flare in the picture. In the picture, the flare has a length about equal to one third the radius of the sun. And the radius of the sun is seven times 10 to the fifth kilometers. Okay, and we want to divide that by three, so that's that's roughly um, two point three times ten to the fifth kilometers, which is about the same order of magnitude as this cube. Um, all said and done, with the approximations we made, um, and perhaps we can say that the cube is representing maybe a a smaller scale flare. And the last part is to think about how the energy gets transported away from the sun. And the idea is that the energy is transported through a mechanism called an Alfane wave, which is a type of MHD wave. MHD standing for magnetohydrodynamic wave. Um, the velocity of this magnetohydrodynamic wave is equal to the square root of the pressure, magnetic pressure or the energy density, divided by the mass density and the square root of that. So we'll, we'll take as our density a typical density in the photosphere. Uh, 4.9 times 10 to the minus 6 kilograms per cubic meter. Um, and we will, we've already found the pressure <clears throat> was 360 newtons per meter squared. <clears throat> and solving then for the speed, we get a oh, fairly high speed. Uh, roughly 8,600 meters per second. And now what we're going to see is if this Alphane wave makes sense for the length and the time of uh, this flare. For the energy to propagate outwards took an hour over a length of approximately three times ten to the fourth kilometer. Okay, so we're going to figure out the energy, the velocity of the flare energy propagation. Is that three times ten to the seventh meters 
divided by um, one hour or three times 10 to the seventh meters divided by 3,600 seconds. There's a couple ways to do this and we see that this is 8,300 meters per second. So the bottom line is the energy propagation, the energy and its speed of propagation of this flare is consistent. with uh, the notion, the concept, that it is being carried by an Alphan wave. Okay, so that's the bottom conclusion.